So we're back at it again for uh, another week of, of teaching on the kingdom. But we're almost there. Uh, in fact, this is going to be our, this is the last session that I will do. Uh, next week, I know Mr. Mintz has a special guest that, that is going to come and, and share with us next week, and that'll be our uh, final chapel for the school year. Uh, but this will be the final one that I will do. And, it, you know, it's, it's, it's been a privilege for me to be able to share the kingdom throughout this school year. We can never teach it all. We can never uh, tell everything that needs to be told. I mean, next school year we'll be on something a little bit different, a uh, different shade of the kingdom. But nevertheless, we, we want to continue in the Word of God uh, because it's, it's my main goal to make sure that when you leave Hollywood Christian, you know what the kingdom of God is and you understand your place in it. Today it may just be seeds. But tomorrow, later on in your life, I'm praying that it be something that will germinate into your success for, for living. Uh, so it's been my pleasure to be able to teach the kingdom with you all. So we're going to jump back in. I know we've been kind of spinning our wheels in the same place for the past few weeks. Uh, but I do want us to make a little bit of progress and be able to finish this up today. Uh, remember last week we started talking about applying the kingdom. Uh, and one of the things that we indicated was that in order to be able to apply the kingdom, you have to have proper priorities. And with those priorities, when you understand who you are and what God has called you to do, you understand your purpose in life. And if you have the right purpose, that purpose, as you understand it correctly, will begin to produce a conviction inside of you. That conviction is like an internalized belief. It's not something that you even think about anymore. It's just a natural part of who you are. That conviction, in turn, produces a passion. That passion, in turn, began to produce inspiration. That inspiration in turn produces influence, and we learned that influence is leadership because you cannot lead without being able to influence others. So we're gonna kind of pick up from there. So when it comes to priorities, here's the thing we have to understand is that misplaced priorities causes us to become preoccupied with the wrong things. Misplaced priorities will cause you to become preoccupied with the wrong things. And that's very easy to do in life, believe it or not. It's very easy to go through a season when you don't quite have everything in order the way you know it's supposed to be. But when priorities get out of order, you're no longer focused on purpose the way that you should. If you're not focused on purpose the way that you should, then you're failing to fulfill the will of God in your life. And so we want to make sure that we always maintain the proper priorities. And Jesus made that process simple when he said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be added unto you. But it's so easy. And there are times in life where we have to go back and reorder ourselves and reorient ourselves to make sure that our priorities are in the right place. Because if you misplace your priorities, if you put last things first, if you put urgent things before important things, because not everything that is urgent is important. If you put urgent things before important things, then you're getting the, 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 the horse before the cart and we'll have our priorities out of order. So in order to protect our lives and to protect progress in life, we want to make sure that we keep those priorities straight. Here's the thing. Remember when you go back to Genesis when God created the earth and he placed Adam in the garden. The very first priority that God gave Adam and Eve way back in the garden was to develop, to expand, and increase the kingdom of God. When God looked at Adam and he told Adam, be fruitful multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion. What he was telling Adam is that, Adam, your first priority is to develop. Your first priority is to make things grow. Your first priority is to make things multiply and to increase. That was his priority and the thing that he was to focus on in his life. And that, that commission has never changed. It's still the same thing for us. Having a kingdom mentality means you have a mentality where everything that you touch, you want it to grow. Everything that you see, you want it to develop. Everything that's a, a part of your responsibility, you want to add to it. That's what's having a kingdom mindset is about. You're not having a mindset where you want to destroy everything. The only thing that you should destroy in your life are the things that do not come from God. But a person with a kingdom mindset are always looking for ways to grow. They're always looking for ways to develop. They're always looking for ways to increase. In fact, that's naturally in you. There's something about you that hate it when something takes your freedom away. When you're not able to do things that you feel like you need to do, when you're, able not to, when you're not able to accomplish things you feel like you need to accomplish, there's something inside of you that can't stand a situation like that. Because there's a part of you that is equipped by God to naturally be a leader. 
There's a part of you that has to have a certain amount of freedom because you recognize that that freedom is the key to fulfilling your will and fulfilling, fulfilling God's will and fulfilling your purpose for your life. So it's naturally in you to be that way. But that was the first order, the first priority that God gave Adam back in, in the garden, and that priority has never changed. Jesus came and gave us the exact same priority when he said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It's the same thing. It's just worded differently. Because here's the thing about kingdoms. All kingdoms must continually impact the territory in order to remain effective. That's what makes kingdoms effective. They have to always be impacting a territory. If a kingdom is no longer impacting a territory that it has gained, then that kingdom will cease to be effective. And when that kingdom ceases to be effective, that is a threat to the king and his citizens. So it's important that all kingdoms remain effective. So this is why we have to continually be growing. This is why we have to continually be developing. This is why we have to continually stay focused on the right purpose. This is why we must keep the priorities straight because we have to make sure that we're always impacting the earth with the kingdom of God. Because when that process stops, it aborts the presence or, or rather the, the purpose that God has for our plans and we can not fulfill his will for our lives. So we wanna always make sure we're making that progress. One of my, my favorite speakers, Les Brown, always tells this story about the, the, the Chinese bamboo plant. And when he tells that story, he talks about the fact that this, the, the seed for a Chinese bamboo plant is an extremely hard seed. It's a very, very hard seed. And with this Chinese bamboo plant, it takes five years for that plant to be able to grow. And when you put this seed into the ground, it's, it's so hard that you have to water it and you have to fertilize it every single day for five years. And if there's ever a point in that process where you stop watering it and where you stop fertilizing it, that, that Chinese bamboo plant will die in the ground and you'll never see it. But once you get past that fifth year, he said the plant grows 90 feet in just six weeks. And then he always follows it up with the same question. He says, so how long did it take that plant to grow? Did it take five years? or did it take six weeks? It took five years, right? But it took five years of work and working on something that you couldn't see. It took five years of developing something and you couldn't even tell that it was developing. For all you know, the plant could have been inert and not even able to grow. But in order for you to get to the results, you have to keep planting, you have to keep watering, you have to keep fertilizing, even when you don't necessarily see the results you, you, you want to see. That's called faith. We don't live by sight, we live by faith in the kingdom of God. So we have to always be making progress and we have to always be keeping those priorities in order because all kingdoms must continually impact your territory in order to remain effective. So the priorities have to stay straight, why? Because priority is a fundamental principle of progress. You wanna make progress in your life? Priority is a fundamental principle. And, and it doesn't matter what it is, Whatever you want to accomplish, whatever point you want to grow to, you have to have the right priorities to match that purpose that you're trying to grow to. And at any point, you abort the correct priorities and you are aborting progress at the same time. So in order to ensure that we're always making progress, we have to keep priorities straight. And it's so easy in the world in which we live to get sidetracked on unimportant things. But priority is a fundamental principle of progress. Here's something else. Priority is also a fundamental principle of effectiveness. So it's not only a fundamental principle of progress, because it's a fundamental principle of progress, it's also a fundamental principle of effectiveness. So we have to make sure that we keep first things first in order to be able to remain effective in the earth because we want to be effective and we want to live effective lives. So what's the point then of, of priority? Here, here's, here's the main thing. Priority protects many things in our life. First of all, priority is gonna take progress. We've already said that. You have priority straight, you're gonna be able to protect your progress. Second thing, priority protects your energy. There are a lot of things in life that's gonna vie for your energy. That's gonna want you to be able to commit yourself to doing something. But priority, if you have your priority set, you know what to use your energy on, and you know what not to waste your energy on. There's all kind of drama you can get caught up in. Caught up in. But if your priority is straight, you recognize that I don't have time for this drama. 
I have these other things in my life I need to focus on. That's all kind of stuff that's going to vie for your attention and for your energy. But when your priorities are straight, it'll protect your energy because it'll protect the main thing that you need to focus on. Priority protects your gifts and your talents. If you don't have the right priorities in life, then you can misuse your talents. You can misuse your abilities, and you can misuse the gifts that God has given you. Don't put those up yet. I got something else I'm going to give you. Another thing is priority will protect your decisions. If you know that you have priorities correct, If you know that you have your priorities correct, uh, then you, it helps you be, be able to make decisions in your life. Secondly, it protects your discipline. It helps you to stay focused, it helps you to stay orderly, and it helps you to keep your life orderly, uh, organized. Finally, priority protects your life. I can tell you, I don't know how, how much you've been through right now in your life, but I can promise you that at some point, life will get confusing for you. No matter how confusing life may get, there's still only two things you need to focus on, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Doesn't matter how many times you fall, doesn't matter how many times you mess up, you still got two priorities. When you make a mistake, when you fail, when you fall short, you get up and you focus on those same two things again, and you start back over. You're gonna fail, you're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna do things you regret, but you get up and you start over. So if I start over on Monday, and I fail again on Tuesday, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start back over. If I get up on Wednesday and I fail again on Thursday, guess what I'm gonna do on Friday morning? I'm gonna start all back over again. And I'm not gonna quit. And I'm gonna keep working it, and I'm gonna keep working it, and I'm gonna keep working it because God has promised me that as long as I keep my priorities straight and I stay focused on his will and focused on his purpose, that success will come. I wanna share three things with you. And this is going to be my last point for this school year. Let's see three things. I want you to write it down on your, your sheets that you have. Write these three things. Now, there are three things required for you to be successful. Back when I was in college, I took a class called Exploring Success. A professor there named Dr. Muncy. He was a very interesting and peculiar guy. He's one of those people that wear the same exact thing every single day. Every single day, Dr. Muncy would wear his white dress shirt, his black pants, his black dress shoes, no matter what day of the week you saw him on. Always wearing the same, They're very peculiar, but he was very wise. And he told me, he said, there are three things you gotta have in order to be successful at anything you wanna do in your life. Three things you gotta have. First one he said is desire. You gotta have a desire, you gotta want it. You gotta be hungry for it, you gotta be thirsty for it. You gotta be willing to get up early in the morning for it. You gotta be willing to stay up late at night for it because there's a deep desire inside of you that just wants this bad enough that you're willing to go through anything you have to go through in order to be able to accomplish it. So if you, if you want it and you're hungry enough, you'll be able to get it. The second thing is faith. The second thing is faith. You gotta have faith. Because what's gonna happen, even the Bible says, I shared with my staff this morning, the Bible says that a righteous man falls seven times but he rises back up again. A righteous man, that means a person who has a relationship right with God, will fall. The difference between a righteous man and a wicked man is that the righteous man gets up every single time. So you gotta have comeback power. Part of having comeback power is the faith that you have ingrained in you that says, I've gotta get back up. Same professor, Dr. Muncy, he told me one time, he said uh, he was quoting another boxer. He said a boxer would always say, it's not the hardest punch in life that knocks you down. It's the one you least expect it. So it's not the punch that hits you in the face the hardest, not the one that you saw coming that knocked you out. It's the one that you least expected that knocked you down on the canvas. But you've got to be willing to get back up. You've got to be hungry enough, and you've got to have a conviction that says, I've got to get back up, and I've got to be successful at it. Third thing he told me, you've got to have ability. <laughs> you've got to be able to do it. So whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, you have to cultivate, you have to manage, you have to grow, you have to always be increasing your ability. Think about some of the people that you admire the most. Think about some of them. Not just your family members, I mean famous people that you don't even know yet. One of the things you probably admire is their ability to do something, am I right? For most of you, when you think about that famous person that you really and truly admire, one of the things that you admire about them is their ability to do something. Whether it's their ability to play basketball, whether it's their ability to sing, whether it's their ability to lead, 
whatever it is, there's something about their ability that attracts you to them. And what's going to make you successful is when you grow your ability enough to stand out from the crowd. To make that ability grow enough to stand out from the crowd, you got to have desire, and you should have got to have some faith behind it too. Because that's the only way it's going to happen. I'm telling you, you plant these three things in your heart, and you can be successful at anything you want to do in your life. That's what he taught me. I mean, that was a long time ago, and I'm still living by it. Now, that's oversimplified. And that process is simple to understand, but it's much, much harder to do. Because when you really hit the rubber to the road, and you really start living on this thing day to day, you'll find that there are all kind of challenges. There are all kind of things that come against you. There's all kind of stuff that people would do to you to try to hinder that progress, to try to mess you up, to hinder you from feeling, fulfilling God's will. It's a simple process, and it's easy to understand, but it's a challenge you want to actually accomplish. That's why the Bible says this. The Bible says, wide is the way that leads to destruction. And anybody can go down the road. It's, it's easy to go down that road. But he said, narrow and straight is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. Why? Because most people don't have the instinct to survive long enough to get through the process. But if you have the desire and it's big enough, if you have the faith and it's strong enough, and you're willing and ready to cultivate your ability to pull yourself out from the crowd, you can be successful at anything you want to do in your life. Amen? Let me pray with you. Father, I thank you so much that we've had this time, this opportunity, and this privilege to be able to get into your word. Father, you've seen all the things we've studied throughout this year from beginning up to now concerning your kingdom. Father, you know that we can't teach it all. You know that we can't teach it perfectly. But my prayer this morning, Father, is that the words you've planted in our hearts will remain with us. That as we stay in your presence, as we fulfill your will, as we do all we can to honor and glorify you, that we will grow, that we will increase, that we will multiply, and do exceedingly and abundantly above what anyone could ask or think of us. May you confer your kingdom upon our lives and let your Holy Spirit be a seal and a mark upon us. We give you glory, we give you praise, and it's in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>